Hello, welcome to Fabulous Living with Angela Jones. I'm your host, Angela Jones. Hey, everybody. Happy Sunday. Hope you've had a good week and a good start to your week so far. Beautiful day here in D.C. And uh, the sun is shining. It's great. It's a good day. It's been a good day. It's been a very productive weekend for me. I took um, two days on Thursday and Friday, and I worked from home, which was so great. I have been burning both ends of the candle, and it was just nice to be able to work at home at my own pace and to just kind of do a little nesting, you know. So it was nice to get some things done at home and get prepared for the fall and all that good stuff. So that's kind of what I did. So it was great. So speaking of fall, that's what today's show is all about. I thought now that it is getting a little crisp in the mornings these days, uh, I'm thinking that Now we can kind of like talk, I mean, I know last weekend was the first weekend of fall, but now I kind of feel like we can talk about fall a little bit more now, even though it is going to be in the upper 70s this week. (laughs) It's crazy. But in the mornings when I'm walking my dog, I do need like a little, a, a light jacket on really early in the morning. So I'm like, okay, now we can kind of start easing into this whole fall, you know, like all of our, you know pumpkin, spice, lattes, and, you know, all that good stuff. Now I'm ready for them. I know I had a little meltdown a couple of weeks ago about seeing that pumpkin spice cheesecake. I'm over that now, only because it's fall. That's the only reason why. (laughs) So today's show is all about fall, and I've entitled it, It's Fall or Nothing. Get it? Like it's all or nothing? Get it with the fall? Get it? I'm corny. Anyway, that's what we're going to be talking about today. So we're going to be talking about all things entertaining and, you know, celebrating the fall harvest. So anyway, I know that I've talked about people rushing the season, but again, I think, I hope I have reiterated the fact that I love the fall. I love all the fall foliage and all of that good stuff. I love it. I love sweaters and boots and, you know, hot chocolate and hot apple cider. I love all of that in due time people in due time i just didn't want to see all that pumpkin stuff you know when it was still officially summer but now we can kind of ease into all of that very slowly we're going to get into that now now that tomorrow see for me too now that tomorrow is really like october in my mind that is fall i know that fall started at the end of september on the 22nd but in my mind now i feel comfortable talking about the fall so it's fall or nothing today. <laughs> All right, I'm ready to see when you get a moment. Let's get the PowerPoint going. So first of all, I feel like just like with fall wardrobe, like I said, you're, you know, you're getting ready for fall with, you know, changing your wardrobe up slowly but surely or transitioning your wardrobe to fall things, you know, still kind of wearing summer things that you can kind of transition into fall. You should be doing the same thing in your home. So first, I'm going to, I wanted to talk about fall decor. That's the first thing that I wanted to kind of lead into, just kind of decorating your home for the fall season. So um, there's so much you can do with the fall. Um, and for me, and again, this is just my take on things, I am not a, I don't take, you know, I don't really think, okay, of course, first, Right away, when you think of fall, you're thinking browns and oranges and golds and mustards and, you know, all of that. That's really not my thing. I'm really kind of into more subtle shades of, you know, to kind of bring in the fall, which we'll kind of get into in a minute. But first of all, I think it all starts at your front door. I feel that when you are for your home, I just think that your entrance says a lot about what's behind the other side of the door. So I think it's great to make a first, a great first impression, you know, create, like I said, create a grand entrance at your front door or at, or at your porch. Now I live in, a, in an apartment here in the city and I have my whole front door, like, you know, decked out. I have like a leopard, you know, welcome man. I've got lanterns and <laughs> Some of my friends are like when they when they your know, friends that have come by who have never been you know to my place are like we knew which one was your apartment because we saw all this stuff on the outside we knew that was you you didn't even 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 need to give us the apartment number because we knew that was your door so yes 
So people know me. So they knew that when they saw all the doodads and all the ornamentation out in front, that it was me. That's where I live. So you definitely want to kind of create that ambience. And just fall is the perfect time to do that, you know, because you can add so much at your front door. So let's just dive right into how you can kind of create that look. Next slide, please. Thank you. So first off is you do want to create a defined color palette, you know, and like I said, fall isn't about just orange and brown. For me, I tend to like a lot of my house, my home is basically um, the new neutral, which is gray. So I have gray, like a very pale dove gray walls with like white trim. And then I have like a gray sofa and then I've accented it with like, creams and um, silver and gold and a dash of pink here and there. So for me, orange and brown just aren't my thing. They're just not my thing. So for me, this mercury glass, you know, um, pumpkin is perfect. Um, and then I have I found the, all these at Home Goods and Marshalls. And then I have this pumpkin, this white pumpkin that's like ceramic and it says grateful in it and silver, you know, which will be great as I transition right into the uh, Thanksgiving season holiday and then I have this other um, ceramic um, pumpkin that says hello fall hello fall nice to meet you happy to see you so yeah so definitely create your color palette and then kind of go from there and hey fall is about that don't get me wrong, I like those I like the orange and everything but it's just really not my thing so I kind of add you know my own little take on uh, what fall looks like to me. And we'll see that in some other pictures too. But you definitely want to create a defined color palette. Whether you're going for the traditional oranges and browns and mustards and all of that, you know, um, or if you want to do more of a muted palette, maybe you don't like all the, you don't want your porch or your home to look like it just threw up, you know, pumpkin everywhere. Um, you may want to do something that is more neutral like, like I've um, decided to do. So that's a thought too. Um, and I've been looking in some magazines and things like that. And there, you can also, cause think about it, depending on where you live, there's also like that rich, like aubergine, like rich, rich, deep purplish color. That's another color that you could add to if you're really not into the orange and all of that good stuff. But it also matches, uh, pairs well with orange, like a deep, rich, 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 like a deep, almost an eggplant purple. It's really, really dark with the, with the orange colors and everything. That is really pretty. So that's something to think about too, if orange isn't your thing either. Then at the front entrance, you can use fresh mums, gourds, uh, pumpkins, of course, to line your steps or your entryway. That looks really pretty, you know, as so. Like on the left, the, the home with the, that's more muted, that's kind of like my kind of look, like with the whites and the grays and the creams and a little green. That's more of my, my jam over there. But if you like more of the traditional look, you can definitely go for, um, you know, the pumpkins with the mums and the, you know, um, you know, more of the traditional color palette, the classic look too. Can we go back to the first slide? Let's go back to the very first one. Very, very first one. Yeah, please. Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. Where, the, where I was talking from. Yeah, there. And then we can go back through the pictures. Um, another thing, as I said, is lanterns. Lanterns are, I love lanterns. Like I said, I have some of my, I keep them at my door like year round because I love them because they create a warm, you know, glow, especially at this time of year. You know, you can kind of get some candles that kind of create more of a warm kind of tone, you know, maybe get like amber colored candles or even orange or like more of a cream. So it's more of a, like of a warm kind of look and kind of creates that you know, ambiance, you know, on your front porch. Now on your front porch, you probably don't want to use real candles. You can do that in the house, you know, whatever, but LED candles are great. And they do, you know, give you that look at first, when they first came out, I wasn't that crazy about them because they looked so fake, but now they've, they've improved upon them and they look really real now. And they kind of even have some that kind of look like they're flickering. So they look like they're like real candles. So you can really still create that look on your porch and kind of layer it with lots of different candles. So that's a really nice look too with the lanterns. And you can use all different kinds of lanterns too. So that's really a cool look. And of course you wanna add a fall wreath and a mat to complete your look. That's kind of, you know, thematic, you know, something that's fall, you know, hello fall or hey y'all, you know, or, you know, <laughs> some kind of thematic kind of look that's, that's fall related, you know, welcome autumn or something like that, you know, so 
that's some, those are some really, just a few tips that you can do to kind of create a grand entrance in your home as we're changing this, you know, as we're changing, as we've now moved into a new season. Next, let's go to the, we already did, you went back. Yeah, that's, yeah, perfect. So here's some other like fall entry ways that I thought were really pretty. Like the one with the swing, I love that. I love that if you live maybe in the climate that, you know, doesn't get, like where my parents live, my parents live in Alabama and it's, you know, it's kind of, you know, you know, right now it's kind of mild. So you can kind of, if you have a swing, I always kind of think of the South for me when I think of a swing. So, but I love that look how they have the pillows and they've layered all of that with the blankets and how they have the, the, um, the, um, kind of like, it looks like they filled a beverage tub with all these different gourds and things like that. That is so pretty to me. And that just screamed, the lantern there, like I was saying, that just screams like, oh, just come and swing here with your hot, you know, your hot cocoa or your, your hot apple cider or whatever, and just get cozy and, you know, enjoy your outdoor space. If you are fortunate enough to have it, I feel like you should be using it as much as possible, you know, except, you know, of course, in the winter, you can't use it as often, depending on where you live, though. Um, but I just think that it's great if you can make use of that outdoor space and kind of bring some of the, um, you know, you know, just in a way, you just kind of want to use it as an extension of your home. That's really the way I kind of like to look at that. And then I thought the one on the left with the, with the, um, the letters that they kind of affix, like the LED letters that spell out fall on the white pumpkins. I thought that was so cool. And again, I like this look too. If you want to kind of subtly, if, if like I said, if the, if the orange and all of that doesn't, it's not your thing, then you can still, you know, kind of celebrate the season in your own way. And it's more subtle, it's more muted, but then it also kind of has the illumination piece to it, much like the candles because the led lights for the letters, which I thought, I thought that was really cool. And it's very simple. It's elegant. Um, and I like that they just kind of have like the crate in the back with the mums in it. Very simple, yet it still says, hey, come in. It's inviting here. Come on in. Welcome to my home. So I like that. <laughs> Next slide, please. All right. The fall home. All about fall decor. Like I said, um, there's so many different things you can do with, um, uh, you know, just kind of trying to bring some of that, you know, um, once you open the door, let's say you, you, you have set up the wonderful, you know, grand entrance with the pumpkins and the gourds and the wreath and everything. You want to still be able to carry that look inside, but I don't, again, I don't want it to look like, you know, we're going on a hayride or anything like that. That's just not my look. That's not my aesthetic. So I still want it to be elegant and refined. I want to bring that look inside once I've kind of captured everyone's attention at the front door. So these next few slides, I'm just going to kind of give you some tips on how you can kind of prepare the rest of your home for fall. All right. How to make your home fall ready. First up is you want to add some layers. Think about it. You know, this time of year, we're adding layers. You know, we're adding, you know, sweaters. We're adding, you know, a scarf or, you know, a wrap or a cape or what have you to our wardrobes. And we should be doing the same things in, in our homes. What I did yesterday was I just kind of added more of a, because in the summertime, you're not trying to cozy up under like a, you know, a throw or anything like that, unless it's a little chilly in your home, of course. But I'm saying, like, you don't want to have, like, a Chanel throw or a wool blanket out in the middle of the summer. So I kind of pulled out my um, throw that's more appropriate for this time of year so that I would have it and added that layer to my sofa, you know, kind of just kind of threw it right behind my pillow so that it's easily accessible when I'm there, you know, when I'm doing my whole Netflix and chill kind of thing. I have everything that I, you know, need right there. Remotes at hand and my little cozy blanket and my little throw that I need there. So, yeah. So, you definitely want to add that layer um, of warmth and comfort because that's what this season is all about. So, you kind of want to make sure you're adding some layers in your home to whether they are, you know, think of the luxurious um, fabrics like chenille or uh, wool or... Um, 
velvet, things like that. Those are kind of the, the fabrics that you kind of think about for this time of the year because you just kind of want to get snuggly. Like, look at that chair there. It's just so cozy looking with the throw there and the pillows there. It just it just adds a little extra dimension to uh, your decor. So add some layers. That's first up. All right. Accessorize with Autumn's Hues. And again, like I said, if, you know, this may not be your thing, you know, to go hardcore, but there's little subtle ways that you can add, like, some colors that are reminiscent of what you would see in the fall. Like, I love, I pulled this picture because I just thought that was so cool how, you know, whether these are you know, faux leaves or they're real. I hope they're real. I mean, that is so cool if you can, if you could kind of just have a vase full of all of those autumn leaves. I think that is so freaking cool. I love that look. I love that. And then you see the velvet pillow there and kind of like the burntest, burnt, burnish orange, um, or more burnished rust kind of color there. And the gold lamp, all of that to me is just so warm and enveloping and it just screams, um, fall. Yeah, so they're just little subtle things that you can do, you know, to say, hey, it's fall. It doesn't necessarily have to be, like I said, it doesn't mean you have to necessarily put pumpkins out or anything like that. You can do a little bit with your decor. If you have a neutral colored sofa, then you can do all kinds of things as far as changing out the colors seasonally, you know. Summertime, you can have cotton, you know, pillows and, you know, things or linen and that kind of thing. Fall and winter, you kind of have more of your velvets and your, you know, metallics and things like that. So those are the kind of little subtle little things you can do to kind of switch gears as the seasons change. Next slide. All right. Cue the carp the copper. I love copper. Um, you know, people have started changing saying it's more, you know, there's there was a trend, you know, maybe a couple of years ago, and it's still taking place with rose gold. Everybody was wanted something rose gold, you know, weddings. You saw it everywhere, you know, even in like office decor for home office decor, you saw it everywhere. But good old fashioned copper has been around a long time, and it's so nice in the uh, fall to add a bit of copper to it because it's a very warm metal. Because think about it, when you, for to me, um, it's definitely more of a fall because it kind of tends to lean towards the orangish family. So copper is great if you want to add a little spark sparkle and you kind of want to mix up your metals a little bit. And it goes well if you want to mix it with your gold and your silver too. So don't feel like, oh, if I get that, I can't mix it. No, that's the thing. I, we don't want to do everything all matchy. We want it to be more eclectic and have more of an organic feel. So definitely feel free to add it to it. Like for instance, I got this, um, teapot. I just bought it. Um, actually last week, actually last week when I left the show, <laughs> I went to home goods and I had stocked up on some things that I needed and I've been needing a new teapot. Um, so I said, Oh, maybe I can get a nice copper one. So that's what I got. And this is a, um, it's by the Molino. Um, and it was only 30 bucks. So it's a really nice, sturdy, double-barreled uh, copper teapot. So it's great. So I can imagine that I'll be making lots of uh, nice hot teas and drinks and things like that with this this fall. So love that. And then I have this copper tray here. You know, I think I had this on the show a couple of weeks ago, maybe even last week, but I don't think I featured it. But copper... I love the fact that this was just like, it's just a regular white galvanized tin tray, you know, and it's trimmed in copper, which is great. So I love this. I mean, so I can really, you know, if I'm entertaining, I can just kind of, I already imagine putting like some, you know, uh, you know, hot rum drinks or, hot chocolate, like I said, or some cider or um, wassail or something like that on these trays and some nice mugs and serving everybody for my handy dandy tray that I got for $10 at Home Goods was on sale. So yeah, so those two things are two of the silver, uh, silver, copper pieces that I brought. And then I have this really neat, I got this in Alabama, I think last year, and it's a uh, Ferris wheel. And this is, I thought this was so cool because think about it. 
to me, you know, fall is also all about, summer is also about carnivals, but then the carnival usually comes back in the fall too, or the fair or something like that. And I just thought this was so cute. And you can put like miniature cupcakes in here, miniature cheesecakes or something like that. And I love that in the warm fall, like metal that is copper. So I can't wait to put some cool things in there for the fall too. So really cute, really cute. So yeah, definitely think about um, getting some copper pieces and adding them to your decor. And it could even, whether they're serving pieces or it could even be um, vases or just little subtle ways that you kind of slide it in there, you know, but definitely add some copper to the mix. I think that's a really cool look. So anyway, we're going to take a very quick break and I'll be back with um, some more little entertaining things I want to chat about as far as fall and then we also have a little fall food. We got to talk about food, y'all. That's an important part of fall. Right back.
was just dancing to the theme music. Sorry, hey y'all. Welcome back. Now, you know, to me, fall is synonymous with food. Food, food, food. That's what we do in the fall. Like I said last week, we gather during the fall. So that's all we're doing is, you know, football parties, game parties, you know, like I said, Thanksgiving, if you celebrate Halloween, there's so much going on in the fall. So food is a big deal, but not just any old food. You know, in the summer, we're trying to eat lighter. You know, we're trying to get in our bathing suits, but in the fall, because it's getting a little chilly, we then kind of want to eat things that are a little heartier. We want things that are more comforting. We want, you know, we want mac and cheese. You know, we want chili and, you know, grilled cheese and roasted tomato soup. Mm, mm, mm. That's what we want in the fall. <laughs> I'm sorry. Those are just the things that we want. Casseroles are big in the fall. I'm not a huge casserole person, but it is something that's a really um, – hearty thing to have in the fall. So this is the time when, you know, you kind of want to have those menus and I mean, I'm sorry, excuse me, those recipes and things on hand because, hey, somebody may be coming over. You want to have something really quickly. You want to have something for game night and you want to have different options for the fall. Now think about it. What's the first thing that comes into your mind? Even we just talked about it in decor. What's the first thing that pops into your head with fall food? pumpkin everybody's making pumpkin stuff so hey that's what we do in the fall you know we we decorate with it we eat it so what i decided to do today i said hey it's finally fall i'm not gonna fight it anymore let's just dive in and do it so i decided today to prepare these yummy little um you know, Madeleines are a French cookie, but they're instead of it being they're more cakey instead of um um, crisp like cookies and I decided to make some pumpkin ones so let's see if I can tilt these down so you can take a look at them and I decorated them really pretty I thought so I dipped them in like a cream cheese glaze and then I just topped them with some chopped pecans I wish I had chopped them a little bit smaller but it's all good it's gonna it's gonna still taste good when it's going down just saying so yeah so this is a nice little you know, a little quick bite that you can have, you know, and I thought that would be my little ode to fall. So I did a little fall baking this morning. Um, well, this afternoon, rather. So, yeah, so pumpkin madeline. So I'm still playing with that recipe, so I'm not ready to put it on the blog just yet, but it will be on the blog this fall. Definitely look for it in the upcoming weeks because it's a super simple recipe. I came home from church, and I baked these in a matter of, and they were, I mean, by the time I mix them up and put them in, the oven. I mean, they were only in the oven for 10 minutes. So this really took me less than 30 minutes to prepare, which is really cool. So quick little dessert that you can have. And it's nice because Madeline's, if you decided to not put the, um, the frosting on them or what have you, you could just, you know, dust them with some, um, powdered sugar and you can just kind of have them as you know with your you know as a quick little bite in the morning for breakfast if you wanted to or you can have them in the evening with some tea or something so they're a really great little bite especially if you're not like me like as you know you all know that I am a dessert junkie but I'm trying to do better I worked out for an hour and a half today got to get it together I got to be 50 and fine y'all so <laughs> so I'm trying to watch my intake and watch my portion sizes so this is good for me so I can just kind of get a quick hit of some sugar and then I'm done so this is a perfect little size perfect little bite so pumpkin madeline's coming your way very soon so I wanted to also show tell you of a couple of things that I have on the blog so you can already access the recipes some recipes that you may want to try as we're kind of moving into this warm weather season or I'm sorry cooler weather season so one of the things, the other thing that people, you know, if it's not pumpkins that we're cooking with, it's apples, apple pie, apple crisps, you know, all kinds of stuff. Apple, apple, apple cake, you know, apple muffins. I mean, we we're, 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 it's pumpkin and apple overload. We get a lot of those things in the fall, you know, because that, I mean, it's harvest time for apples. So I get it. So that's what we're doing. And I'm fine with that. I love apples. So it's great. And apples are great to bake with. We typically think of apples with baking, right? But I decided to do a caramel apple pork chop. And I know you're like, what? 
but it's a nice, especially with pork, you can do so much with pork because it just, uh, it, it mel it just melds well, um, with fruit peaches, you know, you don't typically see peaches with pork chops, but I thought, Hey, you know, apples would be a great combination too. And basically it's like, um, you know, when you think of apples, when you have like, um, apples that like your grandmother or whatever made for you for like breakfast, you know, like breakfast apples. So think about it that way. So it's just really Granny Smith apples and everything that you would put in to make, uh, those breakfast apples, butter, uh, dark brown sugar or light brown sugar, uh, cinnamon, that's pretty much it. And you just kind of put that in the pan and let it kind of form its own kind of like little, like a glaze, you know, and then you put the apples in there and kind of let those stew down. It is great. So you want to kind of sear the pork chops first and everything and, you know, get them fully, you know, cooked, then kind of add the apples in a separate pan and then pour them over, pour, pour that over it. So, so good. And then the, also little, the little thing too, is that it, I, thinly slice some onions in there i am really weird i think i don't know if i shared this with you i don't like onions but i like the flavor of it's <laughs> so weird i'm so weird with food but it's great and it's a nice way to kind of you if you don't want it to taste too because i don't make mine the apples overly sweet because when you think about apples that you have like you know, like stewed apples that you have for breakfast. Those are really sweet. I don't make these very sweet. It's not like apple pie on top of a pork chop. It's more of a subtle kind of car caramelly, you know, apple taste to it. And then the good thing is that the onions kind of cut some of the sweetness out of it too. So it's a nice combination with the onions and the apples. Really, really good. Really, really good. So that's really a good um, savory dish that you can kind of use apples for. And it's just, it just screams fall to me. It just, it's so like, um, comforting, you know, I had it with like just, some um, uh, sauteed haricot vert, petite whole green beans, which was fabulous, a nice green salad. And then I had some corn muffins. So, 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 so good. So that's a really good, um, savory dish. Deezy, can you look at, I want to see if there are any more pictures on that. I don't remember if there are any more pictures under there. Oh, yeah. So I kind of go through the process of what you do. I'm kind of used like a cast. There I go. I have another cast iron skillet that's more of a grill, that has a grill. And I just kind of, you know, on both sides, you know, grill the pork chops in the pan, you know. And then I, you know, proceeded to make the glaze here. I'm glad I didn't realize I had all those pictures on there. This is great. And then what I did was I put everything on and over top, put the apples on top, and then I put them in the oven to, to finish cooking them because I'm really just searing them until all of the, you know, until just clear juices come out, and then I'm just kind of finishing it in the oven for a few minutes. And then voila, bon appetit, dinner is served, just like that. And that's another, that's another little quick dish that you can make Sort of, kind of. It's not really a one dish because we're putting it in another dish. But if you use a cast iron skillet, you can put the whole thing in the oven. So it can be a one skillet meal. And then you're done. Voila, you have dinner. Done. Done. And like I said, you know, I had a salad and then I had a corn muffin with it. It was so yummy. Really good. Mm, that sounds really good. I'm making that tonight for dinner again. That was some time ago when I made that for the blog. But I will be making that again. <laughs> And then what else do we think about when we're thinking about fall foods? We think about soups. I mean, granted, we eat soups year round. Um, you know, if you're at lunch at work, you go downstairs to your cafe or deli and you grab some soup in a salad or you soup in a sandwich or whatever. Some people are more seasonal. They're like, I don't want soup in the summer. I only want soup when it's cold. So if you're one of those people, you're, this weather is coming around. And this is my uh, sweet corn chowder recipe here. And it's really yummy. It's just basically, you know, your corn and uh, smoked paprika and uh, cream and a little bit of sugar just to kind of cut some of the spices a little bit. And like it is sweet corn chowder. So you want to have a little hint of sweet in there too, but really good flavors are in this soup and you can kind of finish it with, um, uh, what am I thinking about? Oh, like you can just chop some green onions and put on top. You can put some sour cream on top. Um, but yeah, there's the recipe and everything there. It's a super easy recipe. 
super simple, but so good. And it's really good the next day, like most soups and things like that. It's really, really good the next day. And this is something that you can easily put in your crock pot, you know, put it on on a, you know, Saturday or a Sunday morning. And then that afternoon, you know, you've got a you know early dinner for your family or during the week you can do it. Make it in the morning before you leave work. You know, if you have a crock pot that has a, a, a timer on it, you can, you know, set it so that it'll stop. So it's not, you know, because when you think about it, when we're gone to work, we're really gone for like, what, 10, 12 hours with traffic. You know, those of you who have to have a long commute. <laughs> um, so, yeah, but yeah, you can definitely set the timer and do this in the morning. And then you have a meal ready when you get home, a nice hearty meal ready. And again, what I love about soups is that everything is in there, especially if you're making some kind of like vegetable soup or a chili or something like that. All you have to do is have some corn muffins, some crusty bread and a salad and you have meal, a, a meal on the table, you know, in no time. So that's really some of the exciting stuff that I like to do in the fall. So this is my time of year. I'm excited. I love it. So we're definitely going to be talking about some more fall dishes and things like that as we're moving into this wonderful fall season because there's so much you can cook. So we'll probably, more than likely, most weeks, um, most weeks um, I'm going to be doing some kind of, probably some kind of fall dish in some way, shape, or form, I'm sure, because it's just so much that we can do and it's so much to cover during this time of the year. And for me, too, like, summertime, I'm not really trying to do a lot of cooking in the summer, so <laughs> that's why you didn't really see me bring a whole lot of stuff in. I'm not really trying to do it. It's hot. You know, I've come out from the heat, so who wants to go into the heat and be in the, you know, and stand in the kitchen all day? Not I. As much as I love to cook and bake, not I. But the fall, I am geared up because I do like all of the yummy foods and things like that that you can kind of prepare in the fall. Other recipes that are on the website um, that are really fall uh, related to is I have a roasted tomato soup that you can make yourself, and I give some tips for making really good grilled cheese sandwiches because. You can't have one without the other to me. That's like peanut butter and jelly, grilled cheese and tomato, you know, and tomato soup. You got to have it. You got to have it. Well, I do anyway. So anyway. So yeah, so check out those recipes, the corn chowder, the caramel apple pork chops, the roasted tomato soup and grilled cheese uh, tips and everything are on the, on the blog site too. In case you've forgotten, it's www.fabulaliving.com. Com. And please, if you're not following me, since we're talking about the website, please make sure you're following me on IG, on Instagram, at uh, Fabula Living. And um, I haven't been mentioning Facebook too much because I'm about to phase Facebook out. Because who's on Facebook, really? I mean, I know the young kids have been off of it because so many of us middle-aged people got on there. They were like, oh, my mother's on Facebook. I'm getting off. So I think I'm just going to focus on IG. So definitely make sure you're following me there. So y'all, happy fall. That's all I've got for the day. I hope you guys have a wonderful week. And until next week, blessings.